right. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Why was six afraid to go camping with seven? Well, because seven wanted to bring three knives for survival, but six knew that seven secretly hated him and did not have benign intentions. Don't be too impressed. I tweeted that six years ago. I'm literally out of material. Or am I? Today on mm, Michael's Math Magic, we're going to talk about card stacks. A card stack is a stack of cards in a particular order, such that a magician knows what card comes next, either through rote memorization or through the use of algorithms. One of my favorites is the one we will be talking about today. It is the Cy Stebbins Stack. First published in 1898 by magician Cy Stebbins, real name William Coffrin, the Cy Stebbins Stack is wonderful, and it is a classic of mathematics as well as magic. Now, card stack tricks have been in literature since the 1500s, but this one really works well. Take a look at these cards. They look pretty, you know, normal, and we can even cut the deck anywhere we want. I can even do a little bit of a messy, you know, put some of the top cards on the bottom, put some of the bottom ones on top, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. Point is, you now get to pick a card. Um, what's the best way to do this? How about this? Tell me when to stop. Okay, you have to say stop, all right? You ready? Whenever, you're, whenever you want, just say stop. Hannah, how about you tell me when to stop? You ready? Whenever you want. Stop. Ooh, nice and near the top, love it. Now, this card that I stopped on is your card. And I know what card you picked. Hannah, you picked the Eight of Diamonds. Was that magic or was it mathematics? Well, in a funny way, it was both. This deck of cards... There's some drilling going on over there, but that won't stop me because I am here for you. Not for them and not for me. I'm here to talk about orders. These cards are in Cy Stebbins' order. It doesn't look like they have any order to them, but I know by looking at a card, what card comes next. For example, the three of diamonds is on the bottom, which means the six of clubs is on the top. <laughs> what is the Cy Stebbins' order? Pretty simple. Each card is three above the card above it. So for example, a six on top means the next card is nine. The next card is 10 Jack Queen. The next card will be a King Ace Two. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. And so on all the way through the deck. But what about the suits? Well, for the suits, I've arranged the cards in what is called chaste order. The word chaste is a mnemonic here to help you remember clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. So if I cut the deck and just pick a random card here, I've got the five of spades. Clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. The next card will be a diamond, and it will be a diamond whose value is three more than five. Viewers at home, may I present the eight of diamonds. Even though I know how the heck this works, it literally makes me feel powerful every single time. Certainly, I won't know what card comes next. Eight. Nine, ten, jack. And after diamonds, we go back to the beginning clubs. Jack of clubs. Oops! I did it again. And I can do it again and again and again and again because this order isn't just linear, it's cyclic. What is the difference between those two things? Well, I think the best way to approach this topic is to talk about the movie Gremlins. One of the very important rules about taking care of your mogwai is to not feed it after midnight. But here's the problem. This has been pointed out by many, many people. It's always after midnight. How long after midnight do you have to wait to feed it? When is it long enough past midnight? 
Look, this is really just a semantic trick because the words we use to describe what time it is in terms of hours, minutes, and seconds are cyclical. If it's eight o'clock right now, it will be eight o'clock again. The days of the week are also cyclical. It is always after Tuesday because there will always be a Tuesday in the past. Unless it is Tuesday, in which case, well, there's still a Tuesday in the past. It's all a cycle. Here is a linear order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This order is pretty easy to understand. After one comes two, after five comes six, but what comes after seven? Well, nothing, unless we create a circle. Now, instead of having a linear order, we have a cyclic order where there is no beginning or end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right back to one. This is how a deck of cards can be treated. If I put these back together, seven will be on the bottom, but that allows me to know that the very next card is on top and it will be back at the beginning, the ace. So long as I do not shuffle these cards and break that order, it doesn't matter where I start. Cutting a deck does not disrupt that cyclic order. Think of it this way, if I take the bottom three cards and move them to the top. Yes, the starting and ending point of this linear order are different, but cyclically, I still know what comes next. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can cut the deck again and move these cards here. And guess what? Now the starting and ending card are again different, but the order is still the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven forever. So if I have the cards in this order, so long as all I do is cut the deck, that is move some from the bottom, maintaining their order and put them on top, I'm just starting somewhere else in the circle. But it's also one of the limitations of using card stacks in Magic. I cannot riffle shuffle these cards because then the cyclical order will be done. And this is where the actual Magic comes in. How can you make sure that your captive audience doesn't think that perhaps you simply know the order of all the cards in the deck. You can learn false shuffles. There's some fantastic tutorials on YouTube where you can learn that. There are also great magic kits or go to your local magic shop and learn how to do it. You can also swap decks. Shuffle up a deck or allow an audience member to shuffle up the deck and then take that deck and without anyone noticing, swap it out for your Cy Stebbins deck. Now, that shuffle I did where I took some cards from the top and put them on the bottom and put some cards on the bottom on the top, this thing right here, it can look really messy. I love it, but it's all actually a false shuffle. I am changing the linear order of the cards, but not the cyclic order. That's because when I take some cards off the top and bring the rest of the cards up here, all I've really done is cut the deck. Then I push some cards from the bottom onto the top and pull some away. I've just cut the deck again. I move net what I'm now calling the top back to the bottom and the, the deck has been put back together. And when I put some of the top cards on the bottom and pull some away, I'm just cutting the deck again. All I'm doing is changing the start and stop points of my cyclic order. So still, Cy Stebbins is in effect. 10 is followed by Jack, Queen, King of what comes after hearts. That's right, spades, King of spades, right there. Pretty cool. But here's what I love about card stacks. You can come up with any order you want. In fact, you can just come up with any order and literally through rote memorization or by using different memorization techniques, remember every single card in order. Here's a really cute one that I like. I've got this deck in that order. This one is called the, the uh, Eight Kings order. And this is how you remember it. Eight kings threatened to Save nine fine ladies for a sick knave. That's it. Those are all the cards from ace to king, and I've put them in chased order, so I know exactly what suit comes after which suit. I'm not very familiar with this order. I just learned it a few days ago, but let's see if I can make this work. First of all, let's cut the deck. Actually, Hannah, come cut that deck. Love it, perfect. Here we go. Okay, now tell me when to stop. Stop. Stop, perfect. Your card is the card on top here, and I know what it's going to be. 
It's the six of clubs. I knew that because I secretly looked at the card right above it, which was the ace of diamonds. Our mnemonic phrase, remember, was eight kings, threat tend, two save, nine fine ladies for a, or one, sick name. Sick being six, and in chaste order, what comes after a diamond? Well, you go back to clubs. Ch the, tss, the, the C in chaste. So six of clubs. I love this very, very much. Card stacks, I love them. They're a great way to explore and learn about linear versus cyclic orders. And it's a creative project you could do on your own. Come up with your own orders, name them after yourself, and then no one will know how you do your magic. I wanna try one final thing. I've got, uh, let me put all these cards back together. I've got a one in 52 chance of getting this right, and it's never worked. But every time I have a deck of cards, I try this one out, and I figure if I try it, you know, on average, every 52 times it'll work. Okay, so let's see here. What card is on top? Three of diamonds. Dang it. All right, if we do this 52 more times, or what, what if this is a video, we can just fake it. Oh my gosh, the three of diamonds really was the next card. What are the chances of that? If only there was some form of mathematics probability that could help us find out. But there isn't, so it must have been magic. <laughs>